it is so good to be back with you. As you know, I've been away a little while from live streaming, so it's it's really good to be back here. I actually have been doing a really fantastic innovation project, a really collaborative project. It started in the middle of November and it finished last Friday, so I am raring to go again. I've loved working on it. It's been a real privilege. I can't say too much about it, but uh, it's also good to be back with you. And tonight we're all about innovation. So I've got a whole heap of really fabulous shows. I've done a show plan. We've got some great stuff coming up over the next few weeks. But tonight is all about what is innovation? Why does it matter to your business? And why it matters right now? It always matters and it always matters to every business. So if you think innovation is for those businesses over there, then I'm hoping to uh, change your mind on that. But also I'm hoping to give you some tips along the way that will help you out. And if you stay tuned in throughout the show, there's a link to some free resources that you can just go and fill your boots and use to uh, drive your innovation, growth, collaboration and um, facilitation in your business too. Now, um, please let me know where you're watching from. I'm streaming tonight to uh, Facebook, to, to three platforms on Facebook, also to YouTube. So hello to you wherever you're watching. Drop a comment, let me know how you're doing, let me know where you're watching from and challenge, ask questions as we go through because this is for you, I want you to enjoy it. If you're watching on replay, then also um, say hi as well and let me know what you think and also if you've got anything you would like me to cover for you. So we will get started. So what is innovation? Innovation is one of those words that is used so much. So I thought it'd be really good to start off with actually, what is it? You know, what is that word we use all the time? And it's anything new, really. It's something that has novelty. It could be an idea or a product, a product but it's all about creating value. In business innovation, it's about solving a problem somewhere. It's about following through on an opportunity. So it's purposeful creativity. Um, it changes the way things have been done and it requires all sorts of skills. So if you're an innovator, and I'm sure you are, that's why you're tuned in. It's about um, using your creativity skills, your critical thinking, your analytical skills, your strategy skills, your problem solving. This is why I love innovation so much. All those skills are super important and uh, it's a great space to be in. And as I say, we need it my, no, no, We need it now more than ever. If I can get my teeth in, maybe there's an innovation for that. Who knows? Okay, so I said that innovation is about creating value. Now, value is one of those words we use all the time as well. But what do we mean by value? Well, we're all in business to solve somebody's problem somewhere. The problem could be a really small one. It could be a nice one. The problem could be that somebody wants to treat themselves and we are there to help them treat them, you know, find the thing that they want to treat themselves with. But actually the word value has multiple layers of meaning. That's why it's quite hard to pinpoint what it is. It's the regard, the esteem that we hold something in. It's how important we perceive something to be. It's also a standard, you know, our values, our judgment of what's important. And it's a number. A value means a number. So we can put a quantity on it. We can actually put a number on it. So when we're innovating, what we're doing is we're finding new creative solutions that provide value on those three levels for the people uh, that we want to solve the problem for, who are our customers they may be internal customers for you, they may be external, they may be both, but the end user is getting some value from it. And from a business perspective, they're getting value that they are happy to pay for. Now, what triggers innovation? What brings it about? All sorts of stuff. The thing is the world around us is constantly changing and I'll share more on that in a second. But new technology brings new possibilities, which creates an opportunity for more uh, innovation. There might be a need that's, you know, we just need to sort this out and find a solution. So having a problem, an unmet need, actually can drive innovation. And we've seen that, haven't we, with COVID vaccines. They didn't exist before. We really had a pressing need. And my goodness, haven't they done a great job in getting those vaccines sorted and out to us so quickly. Continuous improvement, just the need to continually be bettering ourselves and staying competitive. Sometimes something happens in the market, disruptive innovation, that forces everything else to change. There could be dissatisfaction with the status quo and actually customers needs changing as well. And all of those things are super connected into each other. 
but they're all triggers for innovation. The other thing that drives innovation is you, because you are a super creative genius. And we know that for a fact, because you're in your minds, in your brains, you have so many trillions of data points from all your experiences, all the things you've seen, heard, read, tasted, felt, um, and, and sensed. And it's, though, it's that data that drives your ideas. Your ideas are when two thoughts come together for the first time. And you need an idea at the basis of every innovation. That's where it all starts. And sometimes innovation happens just because somebody has a great idea. One of those eureka moments. But it's usually driven from something, you know, and there are different types of innovation. It could be a product innovation or a service innovation. And a product innovation is different from a service innovation, only that... A product is tangible, it's something you can hold, you, like a, a phone, you, you can actually touch and feel it. Whereas a service is intangible. It's here and then it's got, you experience it and then it's gone. So that's the only difference really. Process innovation, where you're trying to do things quickly, more efficiently, better, better quality, and, and continuously improving that. Business model innovation is where you restructure how your business does business. We've seen a lot of business model innovation, haven't we, through the COVID lockdown, for instance, with um, restaurants and food outlets turning more to takeaways and deliveries and so on. So, um, so that's, that's a, a different sort of innovation again. And communication as well, how we communicate our marketing, all of those things um, really make a, a difference. And we can stand out simply by the way we speak to people, simply by our packaging and simply through the way we brand ourselves. And of course, cultural uh, innovation as well. So, and that's where we decide we're gonna create a really special culture within our organization that's going to uh, make a difference. So um, thank you. So, uh, it's, it's really great to see you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm streaming tonight through uh, Ecamm Live uh, through Facebook. So I can't, sometimes you just need to add your name in if that's okay. And I can address you by your name, but it's really good to see you. And uh, it's good that uh, you're here. Thanks for the comments very much. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see, see how we get on. Let me know of any questions. And we've also got a, a comment here. There's no been no choice but to innovate there is no choice but to innovate that's so true okay so oh hi it's ian hello it's ian anderson gray nice to see you Ian. thank you so much for tuning in i think you've just been live as well so uh, really good to see you thank you very much for watching so the innovation iceberg what's this all about well innovation doesn't have to be that game-changing thing you know that massively uh, disruptive fantastic thing uh, most innovation is like an iceberg, it's below the surface of the water, it's incremental, it's the small tiny changes uh, that matter and all add up to create continuous improvement. Whereas differential innovation, that's we see that in businesses, that's just above the surface. And what differential innovation is, is where we're doing something to stand out from the competition, we're doing a better product or service, something new and improved, something that's distinctive, that helps us compete. And radical innovation is, is that game-changing stuff. So in terms of percentage, you know, about 85% of innovation is the incremental. Around 14 is differential, with about 1% being radical as well. So, you know, don't think that innovation just means doing big game-changing things. It doesn't. It's, uh, you know, it's all valuable. It's all really, really important. And it's a process. So if you're thinking, well, all this innovation stuff sounds fine, you know, but where on earth do I start? I've never innovated. Well, you are, you're innovating the whole time. Um, if you have thought of a product or service or launched a business or you're doing things in a business that you are continually growing, you are innovating. Um, but it is a process. It's about putting those ideas in, having the skills, the competency, the resources, the support for those ideas and working out which ones are important, shaking them through the funnel. And so the out pops or the, the benefits of innovation, the new products, the reputation, the new revenue sources, the increased margins, and so on. 
And you know, some of those ideas will need to fall out. And this looks like a beautifully linear process, but actually in innovation, as we'll, we'll see shortly, it's all about getting it wrong as well and learning from that. And sometimes deliberately getting things wrong just to see what happens. It's important that any innovation that you do fits with your business, with your portfolio, with your capabilities, that it synergizes with other things that you do so that it's really adding value to your portfolio. And uh, the economics, you know, the business case, it, you need the cash, you need the investment, and also sometimes you need to wait to get that cash back in. So you need to really think about the cash flow and all of that has to fit together. I'd like to know as well, if you're watching, what is your favorite innovation? So what innovations do you like? What, when you think about innovation, what products or services do you think of? That would be interesting to hear. And innovation today isn't about waiting for the perfect solution to form and getting the perfect answer, the perfect product, the perfect service. What we have to do is build something, create it, put it out there, test it, learn from it and then go again. So it's build, measure, learn. And we're doing that really very, very quickly um, and very low cost. And what this does is it might sound we're always in beta. Everything is always being developed because the thing is, if we try and develop the perfect solution and we take too long in that, by the time that solution is complete, it's no longer relevant. And it's also very expensive and it can be a very expensive mistake to make. Whereas if you go in small steps, do a bit, test it, do a bit, test it, you are likely to get to where you want to get to faster. You will de-risk it um, and you'll get a much better um, innovation along the way because you've been feeding in all the things that you've been learning en route. And the thing is, if you don't innovate, this is what happens. I mean, this graph um, probably looks more complex than it really is. The pink line is the business and the blue line is environmental change. So essentially what it's saying is all the time things are changing and sometimes that change line can be really steep. 2020, 2021, that's been a heck of a steep line. The pink line is businesses trying to keep up with that change. And if we don't keep up with the changing world, what happens is the gap between us and where we need to be as businesses becomes so big that it's a challenge to get up there. Yeah, so we've just got a, a comment here. Thank you very much. It's, um, I think it's when a company comes up with a really easy way to do something. They totally think about the end user, um, Uber, Deliveroo and so on. Yeah, this is where it comes to. Thank you so much. This is where it comes to the... Um, the point I was making really about value, it's got to add value, it's got to matter to the customer and it's got to matter enough that they will exchange cash, their money, for that innovation for sure. Okay, so we've been talking about strategic drift and how it's important to sort of stay in line with, with what we where we need to be as businesses. And there's a phrase that's called ahead of the curve. I'm not really into ahead of the curve. It's about being agile and responsive enough to make sure that we are where we need to be at all points. And look for space that's right for disruption and challenge yourself as well. Are you in space that, that could be disrupted from others? And the signals are a business that's complacent, traditional, like everybody else, where customers aren't completely satisfied, but they have to put up with it because there's no other choice, there's no, nowhere else to go, and where there's a lack of innovation and change. And all of these on here, um, Phones for You, Blockbuster Video, Comet, JJB Sport, th these are all brands that were once around but have failed to move, they've failed to progress in line with, um, as, as we were saying earlier, and thank you for your comment around Uber and Deliveroo, they haven't done that, they haven't matched what it is that customers are looking for. They've got out of date. And there's so much change. There is technological change. And this is driving a lot of the innovation now. It is so accessible um, and so um, relatively inexpensive, a lot of the, the assets that we can tap into to drive innovation in our business. We are in the fourth industrial revolution. That's, that's a real term by the, uh, the, economic, the World Economic Forum because the artificial intelligence is with us, satellite technology. I mean, if you're using 
Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, it's all powered by artificial intelligence. It works out, it learns from your behaviour what it is you want and then gives you more of it. Satellite technology in terms of geolocation and where things are located, um, working through industry and tapping into every, you know, every one of our phones. That generates heaps of data, wearable tech creates more data, robotics, the Internet of Things. If you know what the Internet of Things is, uh, let me know. But all it is is really um, put it in the comments if you've got any good examples. Uh, my favourite example, I'll tell you in a second, but the Internet of Things is where you have an object, uh, an appliance, and you connect it um, through the Internet and you, you control it through there. So my favourite one is actually the Hive central heating thing that we have at home. And we turn the temperature up and down through an app. And my husband turns it down and I turn it up through uh, through our apps. So that's pretty cool. But it's all around us, you know. It's, it's absolutely um, everywhere. We're immersed in it. This isn't coming. And as businesses, we need to tap into that, not just from a customer facing side of things, but also from the perspective that, um, you know, we can do a better job back of house. All the different apps and things that we can use to really get efficient businesses. And a lot of it is affordable technology, too. And thinking about the future, you know, there's a couple of common ways that people think. The first one is if um, it's a science fiction fantasy, and this is courtesy of the Board of Innovation, This, the, um, the, these particular images that you see here. And the second one is if the future is, you know, just a continuation of what we're doing today. But both are inaccurate. What happened yesterday doesn't necessarily mean that something similar will happen tomorrow. And I think, as I've said, 2021, we've learned a lot from that. And um, we, we're sort of sensing that there's a lot of change and the future isn't as predictable um, and consistent as we thought it might have been. So we need to be innovative and build resilient businesses that are adaptable to change, even when we don't know what that change will be. And really be learning all the time to build forward. So my message is sort of disrupt or be disrupted, because if you're not innovating, if you're not driving your business forward, then somebody else will disrupt the market and you'll have no choice other than to make the move and, and work out how you're going to respond. But instead, be on the front foot, really stay tuned in to what's going on in the world around you, into your customers, what they need, super important. Um, but go for it. You be the disruptor. And um, I'd love to hear how you might do that. So over to you. And um, please do get in touch. Have you innovated over recent months? Do you have any big ideas that you're working on for the future? Let me know because I would um, absolutely love to help you with that. So drop me a note in the comments. And of course, you can um, find lots of free resources that will help you on bigbangpartnership.co.uk slash resources and um, thank you very much i'll see you next time in fact next week same time same place 6 p.m uk time on a thursday to facebook and to youtube and next week's all about collaborative working for remote teams thank you for watching see you next time thank you for tuning in to the idea time show brought to you by dr joe north don't forget to subscribe to our channel and access more completely free resources at bigbangpartnership.co.uk forward slash resources. We'll see you next time.